Alrighty, welcome everybody back to another episode of the Ball Knower Podcast Team Preview Series. I'm your host, as always, David Miller, joined today by two very big Patriots fans. We've got Kyle to my left. We've got Chris down below me. So first and foremost, guys, how are we doing today? We're doing really good. Really excited for training camp in a couple weeks. Excited to see the development of Mac and hopefully with some additions to the offense, it's a it's a lot better run team than that last year. Fair enough. Chris, you want to add anything? <laughs> no, not really. This team is depressing enough as it is. <laughs> oh, Lord. Okay, so we've got two conflicting views. That's always fun. Um, so I, I, I think that about sums up Patriots fans right now. It's very conflicting with especially this offseason, how everything went down. You see some controversial draft picks. Um, some big names getting let go in free agency and obviously the offensive coordinator position, if you even want to call it that at this point with the the guys that could be taking over from the out, from the outside looking in, it, it doesn't seem like a great situation, but Kyle, you're, you're a little optimistic about it. So why don't you tell me exactly what, what is giving you this optimism? What do you think is the, the key to the Patriots being successful this year? All right. So the way I look at the Patriots season is it's the same predictions that everybody had last year. There was some easy winnable games that we let slip away like week one in uh, against Miami with the fumble. Um, the New Orleans Saints game, we just got absolutely dominated by their defense. And you can obviously pick out other ones if you'd like. Um I feel like the offense was getting really stagnant with Josh McDaniels over the last couple of years. You could... If you watch Patriots football, you could obviously tell what play they were run just by their schemes. Mm-hmm. I think there needed to be a change. I don't think Patricia and Joe Judge of all people <laughs> should be leading that change. But I'm confident in the new additions with Devontae Parker, the offensive line always being top 10 to top 15 in the league, and uh, just the development of Mac Jones as a quarterback. All right, now, Chris, you seem to have the opposite standpoint. Do you want to give your reasoning? Um, not really. I mean, I what he said is pretty true. Okay, fair enough. Uh, you, you seemed a little less optimistic, but okay, we'll go with it. Um, starting off, I think the best place to look here is this draft class that, to say the least, was very very controversial amongst NFL fans starting out with Cole strange, who was not a bad prospect by any means. I like Cole strange, but nabbing him at the end of the first round, when a lot of people, including myself had a third, fourth round grade on him, It's a very Belichick pick. You know, it's one of those things where he's either going to pan out and be Quentin Nelson 2.0, or he's going to be out of the league in three years. So, my question there is how do you guys feel about that pick? Do you think it's going to be the Nelson? Do you think he's going to be out of the league? Do you think it'll fall somewhere in the middle? Are you worried about it? Or are you just confident in Belichick doing his thing? I would definitely say I'm confident in Belichick because it's Bel Belichick. I mean, he can make anybody good. Fair. Right. I mean, he's yeah. with Sam Luton. Say that again. I said he went seven and nine with Cam Newton as his quarterback. <laughs> true, true. I mean, yeah, he's the greatest head coach of all time. There's no doubt about that. Um, but some of his uh, team building decisions recently have have been a little questionable. Uh, Kyle, do you have anything you want to add there? Yeah, I mean, like like you said, I think Cole Strange is obviously a really talented player. I don't think he was first round draft pick material, but. Um, Unless they heard some rumblings that someone was going to take him in the early second round. Maybe that's why he jumped in on the draft pick. I thought, I really thought we were going to go linebacker there in the uh, end of the first round. There was a lot of linebacker talent, and it was a, definitely a needy position on the defense. We have a bunch of question marks with Roquan McMillan, Ronnie Perkins coming in on that spot who haven't really had the opportunity to play yet because of injury and just the weirdness of the position. But I feel like if anybody's going to either have that hit or miss draft pick, it's going to be Bill Belichick. Because like you said, you're going to have years where you're going to draft a guy out of nowhere 
and he's going to be as good as like J.C. Jackson, like an undra- undrafted player, or he's going to be Nikhil Harry, and you just trade him out for a seventh round pick. Yeah, Nikhil Harry was garbage, so he was worth the seventh round pick. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now, now, now he's on my team. That's fun. Um, <laughs> listen, just a detour a for a moment. Yeah, yeah. He's a fantastic blocker. I posted a video on my Twitter. I'm sure some of the people watching this will have seen it, where he like leveled Miles Garrett which is yeah. one of the funniest <laughs> things I've ever seen. Like he was lined up in the <laughs> slot and just came over and cracked him. Yeah. Like the dude, the dude's one hell of a blocker, but he, he just needs development. He needs time to learn an NFL offense and he need more or less. He needs the opportunity to go out and play. Yeah. It, see, that that's my hope with him because obviously with Chicago's current receiving court, there's a lot of opportunities to say the least. Um, and our new offensive coordinator, Luke Getze, is kind of known for being sort of a wide receiver whisperer. Like Devontae Adams, when he came in, real, real bad drop problem. I, I'm sure we all remember that. And Luke Getze was one of those guys that really helped him get that settled and helped them fix that. Uh, working with Getze is a big reason why Devontae Adams is what he is. So I'm not saying he's going to make Nikhil Harry into Devontae Adams or anything, but if he can make him starting caliber receiver or even like a wide receiver four type guy that is viable. Hell yeah, that would be fantastic. But you know, it's a, it was a seventh round pick. It's not a big deal. So I, Nikhil Harry's a bit weird. Uh, I, I knew he'd come up eventually. Uh, I just don't know how to feel about him long-term, but continuing to look at this Patriots draft class outside of Bailey Zappi and Tyquan Thornton. I got to be totally honest with you guys. I am not familiar with a lot of these players. Uh, these were a lot of guys that, when I was doing my research for the draft, never came across my radar. Uh, I hadn't heard anything about them. Maybe that's just me kind of being an amateur at this thing, because this was the first year where I did like a super deep dive into the draft class, so maybe that's on me. But right. it's 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 weird, and then you take two running backs, you're taking two cor- – like I understand taking two corners. You just lost J.C. J. Jackson – but taking two running backs and not taking a single linebacker given the state of that linebacker core is a bit weird. So I don't know if maybe you guys know something I don't or if there's something I'm missing here with this. So I'm curious as to what your thoughts are on the class as a whole. So the only thing I can think of with like the strategy behind it is I actually really like the two cornerbacks we took. Um, it, it, it seems to me we're going to shift back into that zone secondary like the Patriots ran back in the early 2000s. Okay. They're trying to go big guys on the front seven. They're trying to force you to pass the ball. But it's a bunch of undersized cornerbacks, whether it's height or reachability or verticality. That is my biggest concern with the secondary because the system does work. We've seen it work from, I think, the year 2001 to 2011 before they went back to the the man 3-4 or 4-3. And so I think the system will work. It's just all about getting the players up to speed. But the two running backs, I definitely I definitely don't know why we would take two one running back, let alone two, because I feel like we have a really good uh, duo already with Ramondre and Damian Harris. So... The only thing that concerns me is, is Damian Harris gone after the season because I believe he's a free agent after this year. Yeah, it's – we're – I'm going to be so pissed. I will be yeah. sad because Damian Harris is so underrated. Yeah, he's a stud, but unfortunately in today's NFL world, it's kind of pointless to pay running backs. Like Chicago, for example, is about to be in the same boat. We have David Montgomery who's like a fringe top 10 running back. And he's probably not going to get paid by Chicago, unfortunately. And it breaks my heart. Like, I've got the dude's jersey. He's one of my favorite players. But at the end of the day, he's a running back. And we have Khalil Herbert, who looked half decent last year. And you guys have Ramondre Stevenson, who looked good last year. So it's, it's unfortunately just kind of the nature of the situation. So I guess long term, I can see why they take a running back. But two running backs is concerning. Um. Like I said, like you pointed out right away, and then I brought up as well, not having any linebackers other than like Josh Uche, who seem like viable starters. Like you have a couple guys that have a little bit of upside, have shown a couple flashes, but there's nobody there that you're like, okay, this is the guy. He's going to start. I'm comfortable. I don't have any concerns about him. And you're looking at this draft class, like there were so many good linebackers. Like, uh, 
kid from Wisconsin I absolutely love. Um, shit. His name's completely escaping me right now. He's my second linebacker on my board. I uh, went to the Chiefs. Um, oh, my God. <laughs> Not George Karlaftis, was it? No, it wasn't Karlaftis. Uh, it was a – say that again? Chad Muma? No, he went to the Jaguars. Shit. This is going to bother me so much because I, I love this. It's Chanel. Leo Chanel. He was a oh, guy yeah. you could have looked at, fell to the third round. You had um, Devin Lloyd. Devin Lloyd uh, was there at the end of the, or he went the end of the first, right? Or did he go early second? Devin Lloyd fell, fell. Oh no, Nakobe Dean fell. Devin Lloyd oh, was the one that went early. Yeah, okay. Dean fell because yep. he had some sort of injury he's he's dealing with. But yeah, you could have taken Nakobe Dean. I was mocking Nakobe Dean to the Patriots way back. Like that was like, in my Absolutely. opinion, dream linebacker for a Bill Belichick defense. And I guess maybe he he was way more concerned about that uh, injury that he's dealing with than maybe some of us were. But I just I just I'm not one to question Belichick, but I don't understand the vision here. Like, apart from the corners, and I'll give him Tyquan Thornton because that receiver room is suspect. And Cole, well, no, I'm still going to question Cole Strange because of where he took him. Like, I I just don't understand. I really don't. The, the one the one similarity I find with all these players, um, even though they play different positions, they come from different backgrounds. The one constant theme when you look over like the tape that they release out after they get drafted is they're all hard nosed players. They all run downhill. They all constantly give it 110 percent effort. Okay. And they all have some sort of background story where they're just constantly learning and evolving. And I think that's the type of vision Belichick's trying yeah. to go to. So, like another, yeah. hey, I have this Tom Brady type character on my team where he's on the top of the mountain and I'm on top of the mountain and you don't want that uh, confliction and just up and leave like he did when he left. Yeah. I mean, I get going for guys like that. Like that's Belichick 101. Do your job type guys are exactly what he's looking for. But it's just some of the, like, I, I just can't get over two running backs. That's my big hang up here. I just don't understand it at all. I don't understand it whatsoever. Like, we don't even know if Kevin Harris is going to make the final 53 man roster and you're taking, I mean, granted it's a sixth round pick, but like you have three running backs just go somewhere else with it. And maybe I'm going to look like a complete dumbass here this time next year. And Kevin Harris is going to be like rookie of the year. And Belichick obviously knows way more about football than I do. And I'm missing something completely, but like right now I just don't get it. I don't see the vision. I don't right, see the vision. Right. Of two running backs. Right. Um, unless there's anything you guys want to add there, I think we're done talking about the draft class because I'm just confusing myself at this point. <laughs> the draft class is – that's a little touchy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so I guess the next place we can look, and I'm sure this will be a little touchy as well, is looking at some of the players you guys let go or didn't get a chance to keep around. And obviously the big name that sticks out is J.C. Jackson, who had a massive year last year. Um, now – I don't remember. Maybe you guys can enlighten me. But did they ever say why JC Jackson wasn't coming back? Was there issues with the team or was it just money? Oh, money. Okay. So Belichick wouldn't pay him. Yeah. That's very Belichick. Okay. I should have known. I should have known. Belichick doesn't pay defensive players. No. <laughs> and, which is something that's always been interesting to me. Like when you look at how Belichick builds a team, the amount of guys that like will be in their prime or like just coming off such what'd you say okay anyways <laughs> chris can you hear me yeah i can hear that's why i keep hanging up sometimes. oh okay okay my bad my bad were you trying to say something oh no okay so anyways like i was saying Belichick's philosophy when it comes to building these defenses, because he always has one of the best in the league. He's the best defensive mind of all time. He always finds these guys that are like studs. And as soon as they hit their peak, they're gone. He doesn't let them play out their full prime in New England ever. We've seen it countless amount, countless times. Literally, there's probably 20 players you can name that fit this description. And for some reason, they're all escaping me currently, other than like Willie McGinnis and... Uh, uh, Jamie Collins when he traded him to Cleveland for like a fifth round pick or whatever because he was yes. being petty. Malcolm Butler. Malcolm Butler, yeah. 
Uh, but let's talk about Jamie Collins right quick. Has he had like, three different runs with the Patriots? Yeah. Yeah. This last one, I think, was his third stint. Yeah. Because he got traded to the Browns and then the Lions. Yeah. And we went to the Lions after it. And yeah. I don't even know where he's at now if he's still on the Patriots. I don't know where he's at either. Right now, I think he's still currently a free agent. Him and Dante Hightower. Yeah. Yeah. I, okay. Oh. Yeah. New England should bring Dante back. He's pretty good. He's kind of kind of out of it at this point. Like, oh. like I love Hightower. I mean, he's one of my favorite uh, linebackers the Patriots have had Like in my years of watching football. It's just he's too slow trying to play zone mm-hmm. coverage, and you can't just have a blitzing linebacker. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but like I was saying, it's just crazy to me how Belichick refuses to pay defensive players, yet his defenses are always absolutely incredible. So the J.C. Jackson thing, I get why he didn't keep him around, but it's still going to look bad no matter what because he's going to go to the Chargers and be an absolute stud. And the Patriots cornerback room, I mean, we're looking at, what, two rookies, Jalen Mills, Malcolm Butler. It's 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 not a good group. It's, no, it's no, not our, a good group by any means. Our is not good at all. <laughs> yeah, and uh, Devin McCourty just retired today, right? Wasn't that this morning or was I- it? Or was Jason it, McCourty. Jason McCourty. It was the other McCourty. My bad. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I knew one of the McCourty's retiring. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry for giving you a heart attack there. My bad. Um, <laughs> but yeah, you let JC Jackson go, and then you lost two of your starting offensive linemen with Ted Karras and Shaq Mason, which Karras, I don't even think was that good of a football player. I'm not too impressed by him. He's he's slow. He's not that physical. He's, he's just kind of like a stopgap guy. You know, he's... he's like a bridge setter, so to speak. Yeah, he's, he's a, a big, big dude. But in modern NFL times, you know, you, you can't get away with a dude that's just big on your offensive line. They got to have a little bit of quickness or meanness to him, and he just doesn't have it anymore. Like, people are hailing the Bengals for completely fixing their offensive line, and they did for the most part, but I'm not sold on Karras for them. And Shaq Mason, I guess getting Cole Strange makes that move make sense. But you traded him for what, like a fifth-round pick, I believe? Yeah, there was, there was so much better ways. Like, I don't know if any of you guys have uh, followed Pat's cap on Twitter, but mm-hmm. this dude is just so maniacally gifted with the salary cap. He had a spreadsheet throughout the offseason. I think it's still on there, but there was at least 20 or 30 things that would make the Pats better and keep Shaq Mason and still save you $10 plus million dollars. That's what the Shag Mason move was, right? It was a it was a cap thing. That's what they yeah. had to move on from. That's just unfortunate. Because if you're able to keep Shaq Mason, you're probably not taking Cole Strange at whatever pick it was, 25, 20, whatever. Uh that's that's just unfortunate. You could have kept Shaq Mason, you could have ended up with one of these linebackers, and we'd be having a completely different conversation right now. Absolutely. There's so many question marks, but at the same point, like it's Bill Belichick. He's gonna figure it out. Right. It's that's why this team is so hard to evaluate right now, because I'm going through and doing like the records for each team and I'm struggling to get the Patriots to 500. But in the back of my mind, I'm like, but it's Bill Belichick. Bill Belichick's right. here. It's it's I mean, last year we, were, we everyone was projecting five or six wins, maybe seven for the Patriots. And then they could have easily won 10 or 11. Right. It's. It doesn't make it's any difficult. Sense. It's it's really it's really hard to go into a season out Tom Brady and Bill Belichick together and be like, all right, what is this Patriots team's identity? How are they going to mesh? And how are they going to grow and develop? And what's the record going to be? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's it's weird. I just don't. <laughs> I, this is the first time I think I've ever looked at something Belichick was doing and didn't fully understand the vision. That's not true. It's Belichick. Nobody ever understands it. This is probably the least ima- or the the least knowledgeable knowledgeable I've been of the vision for Belichick. We'll put it that way. Uh, and then on top of, on top of that, a move he made that personally rubs me the wrong way. I don't know how you guys will feel about it. He let Jakob Johnson walk and didn't get a new fullback. This man is giving up on the fullback after all these years of the New England Patriots being a team that is so good with their fullbacks. You had James Devlin. You have Jakob Johnson. Uh, Another guy that I can't think of the name of is completely slipping me, and I don't know why. uh, Landon Roberts at uh, fullback, didn't we? Yeah, Landon Roberts was taking snaps at fullback, and Johnny Smith's going to be playing like H-back for you guys. So it's it's clear that Belichick has a vision with what he's going to do. Like, Johnny Smith is going to be taking snaps out of the backfield. 
uh, not quite lined up at fullback, but but lined up as like an H back. But as a as a just as my fans have called me, the fullback fiend. Uh, it's it's heartbreaking to see that Belichick doesn't see the fullback vision, unfortunately. And it it opens up an interesting dialogue because I personally believe, and this is serious. I'm I'm not saying this just to say it. Fullbacks are about to make a comeback in the NFL. We are in a position where fullbacks are in a prime position to start coming back. And it's not going to be your traditional sense. You're not getting Mike Allstott or anything like that. But you see guys like CJ Ham, Kyle Juszczyk, Alec Ingold. They can do a little bit of everything for your offense. Those type of guys are going to come back. And Bel- Absolutely. Yeah, and Belichick's opening up the door for it to be like, hold on now. What if instead of a fullback, we just put a blocking tight end back there? And it's like, well, fuck you, Bill. You're ruining the vibes. <laughs> <laughs> like I love Belichick, but he's gonna ruin he's gonna ruin the prophecy. He's gonna ruin it for everybody. So I think I think instead of saying like he's closing the door on fullbacks, what if he's and he's running this as a test trial because let's face it, John Smith did not have a, a anywhere near good of a year as anybody thought he was going to. Mm-hmm. What if he's trying to just revitalize the position? Listen, so if, see, if I've seen him before. Yeah, I listen, I would love to be wrong. I would love for Bill to just say fuck it and make Johnny a fullback straight up. <laughs> like throw the like everyone's looking towards H back because it's a tight end moving into the backfield. That's kind of what the, the default is. But if he's right. just gonna say fuck it and straight up put Johnny at fullback, <laughs> sign me up. Sign me up every day of the week. If Belichick is hop like finding a new way to hop on the fullback <laughs> hype train, fuck yes. Put the goat <laughs> on it and everyone will follow in troves. Shanahan's leading the way, <laughs> Belichick's right there next to him. That would be peak. But unfortunately, I don't think that's the case because I feel like, I don't know, maybe it's just coming down to he didn't want to pay a fullback, which again, Belichick, it would make sense. But I feel like if you're going to keep running with a fullback, you would have just kept Jakob because he's like one of the best in the business. Absolutely. And I think it was more or less because uh, I can't remember where I saw the article from, but it was shortly after Jakob Johnson said that he was a return with the Patriots. He ended up... Uh, Leaking it, saying, "Hey, we're just not. They're just not going to do a fullback." Right. I think that's more or less just like uh, positional lineup changes, just to try to make different schemes, try to get teams thinking differently. Because again, right. old Josh McDaniel saying the offense was very predictable going forward. So I think he's trying to just make teams do as much research on this team's offense as possible, just to try to get an upper edge. Yeah, I'm. That's such a Belichick thing to do, sad. too. It's still sad. I love Jakob Johnson. The dude could block, mm-hmm. he could hit, he could run the football. Jakob's a monster. He's an absolute monster. Uh, I don't know if you saw after he signed with the Raiders, they did that like Star Wars photo shoot, and there's a picture that's out there now of Jakob Johnson wielding a lightsaber, and it's the coolest fucking thing I've ever seen. I got so look at cool. that. I didn't see that. Yeah, they did it with the whole team, but Jakob's got his... I, can't remember they're all doing different poses i can't remember what he's doing but i think he has one of the purple ones too which makes it even better that's sick yeah yeah Jakob just said fuck it let me take over the whole photo <laughs> shoot um but yeah i i hope you're right i would love to see john who just become a straight up fullback but i think we're probably going to see more of that h-back role for him which i mean it's it's a fullback but not really you know it's it's a weird gray area between fullback right. and tight ends so I, don't I mean, know. that's something I just reached out of left field for, but I mean, I, I mean, I've seen hey, Bill it's D- possible. Yeah, exactly. It's Bill Belichick. It's, it's Bill <laughs> Belichick. You can never predict what this man is going to do. You know, right. like we, th- we think we've got it figured out with the H back thing. We could be way off. And John, who could just be straight up lining up in a fullback role in I formation. And they could just be, you know, billion things they could do. And maybe maybe with Joe Judge as your offensive coordinator, if he's the coordinator, maybe that's all you could do. <laughs> I <laughs> hope not. <laughs> because, yeah, like, let's like, talk no disrespect to Joe Judge. He's probably a hell of a dude. But mm-hmm. you ran a QB sneak on third and 19 in your own end zone. <laughs> you should not be in the NFL. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> you should not be in the NFL. <laughs> Yeah. And then who are the other contenders? It's Joe Judge and Matt Patricia, right? Yep. Oh, God. Uh, Matt Patricia. I I would rather just have Edelman. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, they've been trying to get Edelman to come out of retirement and play for Brady. Maybe that's Bill's master plan. He told him to hold off until, uh, until they could figure out 
a time when they didn't have a coordinator and Edelman's going to come back and run the offense. He would definitely do a better job. I have no doubts in that. Now, who do you think is more likely to be Colin Plays day one? Day one, Road probably edge. Patricia. Okay. And how long do you think that'll last? Not long. <laughs> so then what happens if Joe Judge checks in and is Joe Judge? What do you think they do you think they just stick it out or do you think Bill's just gonna say fuck it and take the reins himself or Definitely Bill's gonna take the reins. So I kinda have a hot take with this because Okay. Again, it's Bill. What if they already have like a straight up offensive coordinator and they're just not saying it? I, I've said it a billion times, but that would be such a Bill thing to do. It really Absolutely, would. Absolutely, because I was thinking about it on my ride home. So I was listening to some Boston sports radio. And we all know how great that is. And I was thinking, well, there's two names. I mean, we were obviously linked to Bill O'Brien, who's the offensive coordinator at Alabama, who's worked with Mac Jones. Lord. He's he's been at the practices a couple times, but he's already said stated he's not leaving Bama anytime soon. But what if there's just another name? Because there's, I think, a list of four or five names in the hat once McDaniels took the Raiders job. And then it right. just went silent and zoned in on Patricia and Joe Judge. So there could be that possibility. And it's just tight-lipped in the community until... Because, I mean, Bill usually doesn't have his uh, coaching lineup set till August. Yeah. Late July, August. Right. I mean, who knows? Maybe, maybe it's Steve Belichick, even though he's a defensive coach, right? Yeah, but fuck it. You know, if it's between Judge and Patricia, why not? <laughs> Honestly, at that point, why not? Just flip a coin. <laughs> right. Yeah, I'm, I mean, like we keep saying, it's Bill. He'll figure it out. But on paper, looking at it from the outside in, it's incredibly concerning to say the least. This has been one of the more confusing off seasons in recent memory. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. So cutting now to some of the guys they added, I have key additions written down, and I only have three, like outside of the draft class, because they didn't make a lot of moves to really add talent to this team. Like they went out and traded for Devontae Parker, and they signed Jabril Peppers, and they traded for Mac Wilson. Is there anything I'm missing there? Are there any names that they went out that you think are going to be impactful that I'm completely glossing over? Not that I know of. See, I, I know Malcolm Butler is not going to be... Oh, yeah, they brought him back. You're right. I'm, I know he's not going to be like a Pro Bowl player, but I think just his knowledge of how the defense runs is going to be really helpful for the the inexperienced corners and then right. the young corners we drafted. So I think it's more or less on like an intangibles impact, right? but maybe not like this dude's going to be the number one corner in our system. Right. Impact. Right. Yeah, now the Jabril Pepper signing I liked a lot for you guys. Um, you, you've you've got an interesting little group of safeties going on here now with uh, with him and Duggar specifically because those are guys that can come up and play in the box and almost play like linebackers. So maybe that's the Belichick. Maybe that's his vision. He's going to be playing them in the box and not really worrying about these linebackers, which is entirely possible. You know, you have teams like the Chargers that do a lot of that because it's analytically driven or whatever. Uh, so maybe that's the vision. Um, but I don't know. It's I, I really don't have words for this damn offseason. It's just so confusing. And again, now, one thing I notice about the Patriots is they have they either draft or sign a lot of players from the Michigan University. Yeah, true. Yeah, Michigan's college that I support because they're the best. Yeah, they're they're trying to find the next Brady just at every other position. <laughs> yeah. But I, I think Jabril Peppers definitely does a lot. He makes our defense more versatile. Mm -hmm. I mean, Lord knows we need the help in the secondary, but it's always nice to have a guy that can break the line, find holes, tackle running backs, mm -hmm. receivers, and then just hit the quarterback. Because what is the one thing that Josh Allen absolutely torches and he threw the ball for 400 yards and he ran away from it. Yeah. Absolutely hate him. You hate Josh Allen? Yes, but he's so good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I yeah. like I like watching Josh Allen play. I just don't like watching him play against the Patriots. Yeah. yeah. 
That's valid. I'm excited because I thought we were going to win that second game of the regular season against them, but we got destroyed. I know that was a playoff game, but that that was depressing. Yeah, yeah, the playoff game was bad, but then there was the regular season game where you just ran it like 80 times and somehow <laughs> I mean, pulled that out of your ass. Season. Yeah. Didn't Max like, throw the ball like three times? Yeah, Max threw the ball three right times. Right around there. But the crazy thing is, and this is why like, I absolutely cannot stand the Bills head coach. I don't. So after the game, he ended up talking and he was like, oh, Bill didn't make good adjustments. He just stuck to his game plan. Okay. You didn't make any adjustments, and you still lost against a rookie quarterback that threw the ball three times in your home stadium. Yeah. Why are we talking about adjustments if you won the damn ball game? Doesn't matter. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. If you got a game plan, stick to it. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Exactly. Your job as a head coach is to make make a game plan and adjust it. That's that is what you do as a head coach. Mm Mm-hmm. And, like, especially to say that about, like, the greatest football head coach of all time. Like, that just irked me the wrong way. Right. But I digress. <laughs> yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, if he's got the perfect game plan, why would he switch it up? It's not like you're going to be looking at the game like, yeah, we're kicking ass right now. Let's switch it up. It's not, it's not how it works. It's just not how football works. All right, so... I guess the next place we can go here is just kind of run through the roster real quick. Starting with Mac Jones, I feel like he's kind of a, I don't want to say polarizing player, but I do think there are some pretty conflicting opinions on him. I'm one of the people that's in the group that he's a very, I I don't want to say low ceiling, but like mid ceiling, high floor type of guys where he's probably right about as good as he's going to get. Maybe gets a little bit better. So I don't know if you guys, I mean, I'm sure as Patriots fans, you probably don't think that way, but how do you guys feel about Mac? I mean, I like him. I th- he had a pretty good year his first year. Mm-hmm. Um, um, definitely want to see him make some improvements. Absolutely. I feel like he definitely has areas he needs to work on. I feel like they held in the reins for most of the season last year just so – he wouldn't make mistakes because he's a very all in his head type of guy. Uh, that's his character because he just wants to win. I do think, I think Mac Jones's ceiling is a little higher than most people think because, well, it's very hard to find an accurate pocket passer. He can kind of stretch the field with his legs, but you don't really want to see him do it often. Mm-hmm. He's, I think, he if he works on his IQ, his arm strength, his conditioning, and then just doing what he's doing now, just working with all your receivers, trying to get everything in tip-top shape, I think you have a really sustainable quarterback for the next 10, 15 years. Yeah, I can get behind that. I just don't think – like right now, I can't. I did my quarterback rankings a couple months ago, and I can't remember where I put them. But it was somewhere right around like 16, you know, middle of the pack kind of. That's fair. Yeah, That's and fair. I just – I don't want to say it as a negative thing. I just don't think he's going to exceed that much. Like, I think he's going to be the type of guy that throughout his career, which is going to be a long career. I do. I do agree that he's going to be a sustainable quarterback long-term. I just don't see him being a guy that gets much higher than like that 13 to 16 range where he's not quite elite, but he's also not like a game manager. He's sort of that in between. Kind of like a Kirk Cousins type of vibe. I would say Kirk Cousins juiced up because I'm not a big Kirk Cousins guy. I don't think he's that good. I think Kirk Cousins is more of a game manager, but like – I don't know. Kirk's weird. I would say kind of like, I don't know. It's, it's, it's hard to put a name on it. Cause I don't like doing player to player comparisons. I think that kind of stuff's goofy, but like it just kind of in that middle of the pack, like I said, where he's not quite in that elite conversation, but it's not like you're looking at him as a game manager or a replaceable starter. He's just going to be Matt Ryan, I think would kind of be the closest you're going to put him at, but even then right. Matt Ryan right. won an MVP. So yeah, I don't think he has that X factor tools yet. Right. Like he's not going to be like Patrick Mahomes or Josh Mm -hmm. Allen or Lamar Jackson right now, but you never know if that's going to pop off. I don't know. I just, he's, he feels like a hope, but yeah, his play style just kind of feels like a relic of the past, you know, being that type of pocket passer. There's not a lot of those anymore. And yeah, Matt can get out of the pocket a little bit, but like you said, you don't want to see him do it super often. So if he's going to be a guy that's a pocket passer for the entirety of his career, 
I don't think he's ever going to be in that elite conversation because nowadays to be an elite quarterback, you got to be able to do a little bit of everything. And I just don't see Mac as a guy that can do that. And I don't think Mac is ever going to be the type of guy that really elevates those around him to be the best that they can possibly be like a Mahomes or an Allen or a Brady or a Herbert or anyone like that. I don't think he's going to be in that conversation. But I do think if you can get a good team around Mac and you can kind of let them, I don't want to say pull the weight, but make up for what he lacks in terms of like flashiness and making those insane plays, then you can win a Super Bowl with Mac Jones. Absolutely. uh, Because you kind of started to notice that last year, like his personality was eking out a little bit more, a little bit more. Then once he was in the Pro Bowl, it just popped. Right. Yeah. And then he's a goofy dude. You start to hear like, yeah, you, you got to see a little bit more of his personality. He didn't look like, he was getting yelled at for kicking your puppy at a press conference like he was right. all season. He's just he just has to find his own. I think that comes with especially, you know, being the Alabama quarterback. Mm-hmm. There hasn't really been a lot of good ones in the last couple of years. I think two has had the most success before Mac Jones is an Alabama quarterback. Cause I'm I not think. really gonna consider Jalen Hurts. He right. He's not there yet. Yeah. Um because you had you had like AJ McCarron trying to think of yeah, anybody it's, else. It's 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 not a good group. You're right. I agree. Um and I, I do think see that's another reason why I don't like the Kirk Cousins comparison for Mac either, because I think personality matters a lot more with a quarterback than people might think, especially when it comes to like leading the team and getting the respect of the locker room. And Kirk just isn't that. Kirk is like the band kid of quarterbacks. Nobody likes Kirk Cousins. His teammates don't like him. Like we saw Everson Griffin when he got cut, he called Kirk dog shit or something along those lines. Like he he was throwing big words at Kirk and granted he had to apologize when he went back to Minnesota, but like nobody respects Kirk Cousins and you see him out there doing his gritty. He's, he's cringy. But when Mac Jones is doing it, it's like, okay, white boy. I see what you're doing. You know, it's it's it's, it's, it's a, yeah, it's a, it's a it's a different type of different type of vibe. What was that, Chris? I said definitely. I mean, I like Kirk. He's he's probably one of my, I think honestly he's like top 13 in, on my list. Yeah, I'm I'm not near as high on Kirk as you are. I I think personally granted this is a topic for another video, but I think Kirk at best is like 15th. I I put him right. at 18 personally. Like I just he just doesn't do anything where I'm like, okay, this is a guy that you can go all the way with. This is a guy that impresses. This is a guy that can elevate those around. He just doesn't do any of that stuff. Like, yeah, if you put a great team around Kirk Cousins, which the Vikings have right now, he might be able to get you there. You might be able to get him in like a Jimmy Garoppolo type situation, but he's going to put up pretty numbers regardless because he's an efficient quarterback. He just doesn't have that killer mentality. He's just not going to make those big plays that are going to win you games. He's not going to take those risks. Like Kirk Cousins has gone on record before saying that he doesn't like taking risks at all. Like he doesn't trust himself too. And he thinks it's bad. Like he won a game against the green Bay Packers throwing a contested touchdown. And he was like, if I could take it back, I would like, that's not an NFL quarterback. You're not going to win games with a guy who thinks like that. Yeah. Yeah. That's why I like Chris Sims. Uh, his comparison to Kirk Cousins, uh, Kirk Cousins, he's right smack dab in the middle. You're either better than Kirk Cousins or you're worse than Kirk Cousins. Yeah, Kirk. I think I think that's like perfect. He's yeah. just like the middle guy. Yeah, Kirk kind of is the bar. Granted, I think there's at least 17 quarterbacks that are above average in the NFL right now. Uh, so, Damn. so yeah. yeah, but yeah, Kirk, Kirk is the bar. Kirk is certainly the bar. And I think Mac has exceeded that. I think he's above the bar. Like, I, I would certainly take Mac Jones over Kirk Cousins right now. But like I said, I just don't think – like, you look at the other quarterbacks in his class, I don't think he's ever going to be the talent that, like, Trevor Lawrence or Zach Wilson or Justin Fields or Trey Lance can be. I think he's going to be the safe guy. Like, he was the NFL-ready pick. He was going to be the – he was the most likely to be the day one starter. He's going to be the baseline long term, I think. I'm just really glad the Niners drafted Trey Lance – I thought we were gonna get stuck with Trey Lance. I was so I was so anxious for that draft. I did not want Trey Lance. Really? I I am not high on Trey at all. The dude did not I mean he looks really good on tape, but he had very limited college games in a very non tough yeah. divisional conference. 
his 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 skill set. He needs a lot more mature and physically, IQ wise, mm-hmm. mentally. I just I don't see it. Yeah, but, tra- you know, I wish him the best. Yeah, he's just one of those guys you're banking on the traits. I mean, the arms there, the mobility's there, the accuracy's right. there. But like you said, he needs to mature a little bit and his IQ needs to get a little bit better and he needs to handle pressure a little bit better. And I think he went to the perfect spot. Like he blends perfectly with Kyle Shanahan's system and Kyle Shanahan is a guy that's going to be able to get the most out of Trey Lance. So even if he isn't a star, he's still going to win you football games. Like we saw him last year and he looked pretty rough, but with a year under his belt, when he's finally going to be the long-term starter, I have faith in him. Yeah. Uh, But Mac was definitely like the safer choice. He for lack of better words, he was the more Belichick quarterback. Yeah, I was re- I was really rooting for Justin Fields to fall in New England, but the the Bears came up and and took him. So there's Mac Jones because I, mm-hmm. I really I'm a huge fan of Justin Fields. I think I don't think the the team I think the team kind of let him down like Matt Nagy last year. So I don't no. think I don't think we've seen what Justin Fields is yet. No, I digress. We absolutely haven't, and. uh even then, we still saw Justin Fields making big plays. He, Absolutely. He, he, he was a baller. Yeah. Like, I'm a firm believer in numbers don't tell the full stories with quarterbacks especially. And you look at Justin, he had seven touchdowns, ten interceptions. That looks rough. But if you actually watch the tape, like you said, he looks great. He had his moments. He made some rookie mistakes here and there and whatnot. But we need to stop talking about every other quarterback. Uh, <laughs> we've we've get, gotten off track a little bit, which that happens in all these. That's what happens when guys sit down and talk football. There's going to be a lot of all over the place. It's fine. But back to the Patriots. We covered the quarterback room, unless you guys have some controversial take on Brian Hoyer or Bailey Zappi. I think we're good to move on. Bailey, like if – if Mac would to ever get hurt, I think he should probably be the starter over Brian Hoyer. Honestly, really? Bill likes his unathletic white guys, like Brady. Hoyer? That's what Hoyer is. Yeah. I, I think Belichick would lean more towards Hoyer because of his uh, his experience. Like, Hoyer knows how to run an NFL offense. Um, but... I think Zappi can be a better quarterback. He, he he might be able to have himself like a Chase Daniel type career where he's kind of all over the place as a backup and just makes bank. Yeah, I, I don't know. I, I surprisingly like going through like through all the roster cuts, I don't see him making the team. That's just me personally. I don't I don't feel the need to see three quarterbacks on the roster chart. Fair. I mean, he, he might just be a practice squad guy. I can see that. I can see a world where that's the case. Um, Now, moving to the running backs, you guys have already said you like Harris, you like Stevenson, James White, Patriots legend. I I mean, an absolute (laughs) stud. And then Pierre Strong, the rookie. I love James White. Mm -hmm. He's probably one of my favorite players of all time. Just because of that one Super Bowl. Absolutely. I mean, he he scored the the game-winning touchdown against the Falcons, right? That was him? Yeah. All right. Yeah. I always got those running backs confused because they were all the same running back in my eyes. It was like that little group and then Rex Burkhead was there as well. He stood out for obvious reasons, but <laughs> it's it's just they were all the same type of running back. Um, so I, I, I can obviously tell the difference, but like in hindsight, some of them get mixed up. But yeah, James White, like I said, Patriots legend. And then Ramondre Stevenson looked great last year. Uh, Damian Harris, one of the more underrated backs in the league. Is there anything you want to add there? Like I said, we kind of went over him earlier. Yeah. Nah. All right. Fair enough. Now this receiver room is something to say the least. And I can't talk too much. I'm a Bears fan. Our receiver room's garbage, but I mean, you've got Devonte Parker. Who's not terrible. Jacoby Myers, Kendrick Bourne. Um, you're looking at Nelson Aguilar, Tyquan <laughs> Thornton, who's the rookie. Ty Montgomery, the man, the myth, the legend, Lil Jordan Humphrey. Trey Nixon, <laughs> you don't you don't know the legend of Lil Jordan Humphrey? No. His legal name oh. is Lil Jordan. That's his first name. Lil and apostrophe he's like, Jordan. What, six, five? Yeah, he's built like a tight end. He, he's yeah. he's a tight end. Well, fair enough. So he sounds like a legend to me. Yeah, and he got. I'm already convinced. <laughs> Christian Wilkerson, Malcolm Perry, and of course, special teams legend Matthew Slater back there as well. How do we feel about this room? Because I, I don't think there's any reason to be confident in it, personally. Confidence. Other than probably maybe 
Kendrick Bourne, I think yeah. he's going to be decent. Yeah. But I think as long as we have an offensive identity, because right now it still seems like it's probably a rush first offense mm-hmm. like it was the last couple seasons. But, I mean, Devontae Parker, his best season, he played in 14 games. He had a little over 1,000 yards, and I think it was 13 touchdowns. If he can stay healthy, have the desire to just stay on the field, uh, share the ball, I think Kendrick Bourne is a candidate for a 1,000-yard season. The dude just bursts out of nowhere. He's a really he's a sneaky good uh, route runner. Yeah. Has great speed. And then his hands, the dude made countless amazing catches last year. And I think that's what they're trying to get with Tyquan Thornton. The dude was the fastest guy in uh, the draft class. I think you 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 obviously have to add to his frame. Uh, I think he's one eighty five. He, he's very thin, but I mean. If, if you, you work, work on the footwork, footwork and you, you get the hands up to par, I you, you could definitely, definitely have a Devontae Smith, Smith or you could have a Nikhil Harry. Again, <laughs> right, there's, right. There's, there's too many what ifs with the wide receiver room, but I think there's, there's potential. potential. Yeah, I mean this this is a group where, like I said, I don't I'm not super confident in it, but I can see the vision. Like you said, Kendrick Bourne is a sneakily good football player. I, I like Kendrick Bourne probably the most out of this group. Jacoby Myers, I don't know what to think about. Uh, he's kind of on and off. And then Devontae Parker, like you said, he's consistent. He's nothing to write home about, but he's consistent. He can do whatever you need him to do. Um, and Tyquan Thornton, you got to, like you said, bulk him up, perfectly put. Uh, he he really needs to put on the weight. Nelson Aguilar is Nelson Aguilar. And then beyond that, the depth is just not great. So it's not a great room depth-wise, and the starters aren't particularly great. But like you said, if you can find some sort of identity and – can get some at least semi-consistent play out of these guys. Should be fine. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Um, now moving on, to, uh, unless, Chris, did you want to add anything there? I didn't mean to skip over you. No. I haven't gotten really anything bad. All right, fair enough. All right, now looking at the tight end room, we've already talked about Johnny Smith. He's not great, but he's a good blocker and can potentially play that H-back role for you guys, probably going to be playing that H-back role. Hunter Henry kind of fell off a cliff. He was like the dude with the Chargers and hasn't been much since. So, and it looks he like he had a pretty good year. Yeah. Did he? Well, 603 yards. That's not too yeah, bad. Nine touchdowns. Down, Nine touchdowns. Yeah. Okay. Um, I, I'm not giving Henry his credit. You're right. You're right. Statistically, he he, he was, he had a good year. That's my bad. Um, But I'm just saying either way, he went from one of the most electric tight ends to, in football to a guy that like, yeah, he's all right. You know? I, I feel like the tight ends last year, and that was like the biggest issue. It, the tight ends got lost in translation. You didn't really see Hunter Henry get targeted unless they're mm-hmm. really close to the end zone. I feel like McDaniel's, and I and I'm gonna put a lot of the offensive blame on him because it's his job Fair. to make the plays last year. I feel like he just didn't have a plan in place for two top fifteen tight ends in the league because we haven't really had good tight ends since Gronk retired. That's fair. So I feel like I feel like it was just run heavy, and then oh hey, we got two sixty million dollar tight ends combined. What do I do with them? Mm-hmm. And then the, the expectations were really high because everyone was overhyping it up. Like oh, we got Gronk and Hernandez back, and we didn't get that. I think everything was just lost. Oh god, not Aaron Hernandez. <laughs> I was gonna say you should be glad you get didn't get Hernandez back. Exactly, exactly, for obvious reasons. Wasn't he, like, really good, though? Like, Oh, Hernandez was a stud back in the day. He would have – some people – I mean, I'm not old enough to quite remember how great he was, but some people I can remember back in the day were saying he was going to be better than Gronk or he could have been better than Gronk if, you know, his Absolutely. career didn't take the turn it did. But I do remember him being a stud. Uh, but unfortunately, he left the Patriots organization hangings, and since then they haven't quite been able to put it together at tight end. Um, now, one name that I have a question about, because I haven't seen a lot out of him, but the Patriots fans I've spoken to seem very, very high on this kid, is Devin Asiasi. Am I missing something? Is he like a, a star in disguise, or, or are these just, just Patriots uh, fans hyping up whatever? Absolutely the hell not. Okay, okay, okay. So That's everybody, what I thought. It was, I think he was the same draft class as Dalton Keene, and I think... People like the last name. 
He's a hell of a dude. Fair. I think it's us. It, it's kind of like Taco Fall as the Boston Celtics. Okay. Everyone was rooting because it's Taco Fall. Mm-hmm. Really nice, dude, larger than life. Talent's not really there. Okay. See, that's what I thought. Because, like I said, in watching him, I was like, what? Am I missing something? Is there something he does that's just not showing up here? Am I watching the wrong plays? But, like, that makes a lot more He's sense. He's a Michael Hominamanui. <laughs> <laughs> you don't remember Hominamanui? How do you say it? Hominamanui? One from the Bengals? Yeah. Yeah, he spent uh, time in New England, uh, didn't he? Jersey. Yeah. The guy from the Bengals, yeah. Yeah. Like, he's just really nice dude. He's a big guy. He can kind of play. Okay. But... Fair enough, fair yeah. enough. Um, all right, so moving on to the offensive line. Um, it's, I'm not, it's not a bad group, you know. It, you still got David Andrews there. Isaiah Wins looks solid. Trent Brown was nice bringing him back. Uh, Michael Unweno has been good. And then you got Cole Strange, who, like we said earlier, is a solid football player. We drafted a little high, but the talent's there. So it's this isn't a group you have to worry about or anything. I would say this is probably your strongest group on offense. Yeah, absolutely. O line's going to be anywhere from eighth best to 13th best. Probably the offensive line is the most safest bet we have and on the offense, offensive side of the ball. Yeah. All right. Unless we want to add anything there, I think we can move on to the defense and talk about probably my favorite player on the Patriots, and that's Christian Barmore. This yeah. dude is a I fucking animal. I. Uh, I got put on to Barmore late because I, I, I wasn't really aware of his dominance last year until this offseason because on TikTok I did a series where I picked a breakout candidate for each position, right? And I was looking at these interior defensive linemen and I someone had mentioned Chris Barmore in passing. I was like, okay, let me look into him. Searched him up on Twitter and the first thing I saw was like he had 100 pressures or some shit. And maybe not 100, but like yes. some insane number of pressures last year. I was like, holy shit. As an interior defensive like lineman had, in a 3 4? He had the, I think it was the highest PFF grade for pass rushers for all the entire rookie class last year. Yeah. And he's, he's in the same exact role as Alabama. He's, he could, he's a starting caliber interior offensive lineman, but they just put him in when they need the pressure. And yeah. the dude just performs. He's awesome. He's a guy that I legitimately think has like all pro upside. I think he can be one of the best in the business. He's incredible. Like you said, the way he generates pressure, especially from that position, like that's probably the hardest position to generate pressure from. From that position, the amount of pressure he can generate, the amount of times he can get into the backfield and make plays is insane. It makes (laughs) no sense. The man is a freak amongst boys out there. It's it's, it's incredible. Like I remember during uh, his rookie camp when this was, I think, shortly after the Trent Bound trade to bring him back from Oakland. Last year, he went one on one with uh, Trent Brown. I've never seen anybody move Trent Brown like Christian Barmore moved Trent Brown. Fallon, it was just insane. Like he was pushing him like it was just a bag of potatoes. Yeah, the dude's just a freak nature athlete. He has such a high motor, and he has a very his IQ is underrated. I'm I'm excited to see him and Judon again this year. Yeah. He's like the, I don't want to say Vince Wilfork because they're different types of players, but like that type of guy for this Patriots defense. Where, well, no, actually, no, I I, I don't think that's a good comparison because Wilfork wasn't a guy that produced a lot. He was setting up everyone else a lot. Barmore is going to produce regardless. So he's like Vince. Kind of like a Teddy Bruschi type. Yeah, yeah, we'll go with Teddy Bruschi. I was trying to go with a lineman, but yeah, we'll go with Teddy Bruschi. That makes more sense. Yeah, I, I just love Barmore. Watching Barmore play football is like, it's it's perfection. It's beautiful. Now, especially in like a down in the trenches type of position, mm-hmm. like he's gonna go down there and put it work. Yeah, yeah. And like you said, he's just a dude with an incredibly high motor. You know, he wants to be out there. You know, he wants to fight for it. He's not afraid to get up in somebody's face. He's he's just perfect. He's the perfect yeah. nose tackle. He's beautiful. I love him. He's incredible. Um, now the rest of this defensive line, uh, not including the edge rushers, just the linemen here. You've got guys like Dietrich Wise, Devon Godshow, Lawrence Guy. It's not a bad group. You know, it's not a group that those names aren't going to blow you away, but they're very Bill Belichick, do your job type guys. They know what they're there to do. They're going to do their job. They're going to set up other guys. Um, so I don't, I, there's there's really not much to say about dudes like that. You know, it's it's kind of yeah. – they do their thing. They're there. They know their role. They're going to execute. Yeah. Um, now, 
some of these depth guys, Henry Anderson, Sam Roberts, Bill Murray, LeBron Ray, which is that's such a dope name by the by the way. LeBron, <laughs> that's dope. Uh that's cool. I didn't get to watch any of these guys, so is there or is there anything there or are they just kind of your typical depth guys? I feel like that list of names right there are going to be one of the late cuts. Like Henry Anderson, mm-hmm. he was the guy okay. I think we brought in from Miami. Just I, I feel like it's just over depth and the defense. There's more players on defense, so that's where you're going to see a bulk of your cuts, especially mm-hmm. from like especially from Henry Anderson. Right. Okay. All right. Now looking at the edge rushers here, we've got what Judon and uh, Uche. Is Uche an edge rusher? They've got him listed as one. Yeah, so he's he's taking over Winovich's spot. Okay, so they're moving him. I was gonna say because I yeah. didn't I didn't I didn't think he was taking. It was of a snaps. linebacker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, that makes sense then. All right. Yeah, Uche is a good linebacker. I liked Uche last year. He's solid. Uh, but Judon, obviously one of the best in the business. Fantastic edge rusher. Dude's a monster. Terrible recruiter. I knew he's gonna produce. Mm-hmm. No. Freaking beast. Yeah. Yeah. It's a monster. I, another dude with, with just an incredible high motor, you're not going to beat me mentality. Mm-hmm. And again, yes, I, I just wish his recruiting skills were a little better. <laughs> oh, is there a story with his recruiting being bad? I must have missed that. Oh, you didn't see the entire Twitter? This offseason no. used to was... every major free agent <laughs> trying to get him to come over to New England. No, I completely missed that. Bad. He was like the follow of the year for Twitter on uh, the NFL offseason. Like he was tagging OBJ, um, Juice Landry, basically Allen Robinson there for a little bit. Like just oh, everybody goodness. that was a free agent at a position he needed. It was, hey man, you want to come win a ring? Uh, uh, Gilmore. He's like, hey, I saved your locker for you. I'd see uh, that one. I did see yeah. him trying to get Gilmore. I did see that one. Okay. Yeah. It, I can't. We freaking traded Gilmore, Gilmore and we got like, like a bag of Skittles, Skittles basically for him. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, at the end of the day, Belichick just wanted to get rid of him, and no one was going to trade for him for anything more. So he just wanted whatever value we could get. That was a weird trade, but like, if it's either you get a sixth round pick or you cut him, you're going to take the sixth round pick. You know. Yeah, he wasn't going to come back and play. He was too disgruntled with the terrible yeah. offer that Belichick probably gave him. But mm-hmm. is what it is. That's just the system. Yeah. Now, looking at the rest of these linebackers, we've got Raquan McMillan, Cam McGrone, who is deeper in this depth chart than I would have expected. McGrone was a guy I liked coming out, but maybe he hasn't produced for the Patriots the way I expected him to. Is, is that the case? So McGrone, I think he was – they basically used him as a redshirt year last year. Oh, okay. And then McMillan – yeah, because McGrone tore his ACL, I believe, in training camp Right, last year. okay. That's right. And then Roquan McMillan, he played maybe 11 snaps and he had shoulder, uh, shoulder surgery. Mm-hmm. I'm actually really, 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 really high on those two this year. Yeah, those, those are, are my picks for just the surprise pop out players of the year. Yeah, I was gonna say I liked McGrone coming out. I completely forgot he got hurt. That that completely yeah, he tore his ACL like week one or two yeah. in the training camp last You're right. year. You're right. Yeah, I was going to say, outside of uh, McGrone and McMillan, if you're high on him, I haven't watched as much of him. Maybe I need to go back. Because uh, what I saw, yeah, if him, you like Barmore, you're gonna he's like a uh, smaller Barmore motor skills, but the dude okay. can play coverage. Interesting, he was he was one of the again for I, I don't like to use PFF grades a lot, but yeah. In uh, college for Oklahoma, he was a top five PFF grade cover linebacker. Okay. The dude can blitz, he can stop the gaps, and he can hit, he hits with some passion. Okay. Which is something, something we need. We need that toughness back, especially mm-hmm. in that linebacker group because Hightower just didn't have it. Yeah. I, I wouldn't want to get hit by him. No way. <laughs> I was gonna say if you're gonna if you're gonna share a name with one of the best rappers to ever do it, you gotta be a badass. You gotta have something exactly. for you. Um so yeah, this linebacker room, I mean it's it like we said earlier, again, it, it was one of their needs this offseason. They didn't do too much to address it. It's nothing to write home about. It's just it's kind of mid to be to be kind of blunt with yeah. you. It's it's yeah. 
nothing special. But if Cam it's McGurn, like the perfect adjective, though. Yeah, yeah. But if Cam McGrone can step up, I mean, you could be looking at something nice. You could have a nice little uh, little core to work with, and then kind of build off of it this upcoming off season. Uh, McGrone is definitely a guy I've got my eye on because, like I said, I was disappointed I didn't hear too much out of him last year, but I had completely forgotten that he got hurt. Yeah, yeah, that was that was like one of the. It was really quiet because I believe it was week two of training camp, like when they first put uh, the pads and helmets on. Right. And it was like a non-contact injury, and then you didn't hear anything since. Like I completely forgot about McGrown until draft time. Right. And I was like, oh, yeah, that's right. Same with Ronnie Perkins, too, now that I'm thinking of it. The mm-hmm. other DN from Oklahoma, another yep. injured guy that didn't get a chance to play, who's high motor, mm-hmm. can hit like a bastard. Yeah. And then finishing off with this secondary, we've already talked about the corners. They're bad. It's it's not a good group. There's, there's some upside there with the two rookies, but until we see them do anything, it's, it's going to be labeled a bad yeah, room. Um, oh, go ahead. Isn't it Jonathan Jones still there or no? I don't believe so. No, he is. He is. Am I missing something here with Jonathan Jones? No. Okay. Yes, that, I mean, he's not like the best, but like, he's all right. He's solid. I mean, I, I okay. feel like Adrian Phillips is probably like the pop out guy in our secondary. And he just got a nice extension, too. Yeah. Like during the season. Yeah. I mean, I, that was actually probably one of my favorite moves of the off season, even though it wasn't even in the off season. Yeah, I mean, I don't have a problem with your safeties. Like I said earlier, I like Duggars, I like Peppers. They're versatile guys that can do a lot for you, especially when your linebacker core isn't the best. They're, that, they're guys that can come up and play in the box if you need them to. McCordy, he's still got the IQ. He's still trucking out there. He's not quite what he once was physically, but you got to have a guy like that in your defense. You got to have a guy that can lead your secondary, and that's what McCordy is for you. And like you said, Adrian Phillips is nice. He's, he can make some plays for you here and there. Uh, it was definitely a good idea to extend him long term. So the safeties, I don't have an issue with, but those corners are rough to say the least. I, I, I feel like that that like cornerback, linebacker, maybe, and then just polishing up the whole line is going to be a huge address next year when the cap space opens up i think there's 99 million dollars in open cap space for the patriots next year yeah i can get behind that i can agree with that all right well you kind of ran through the the roster there so i'm gonna check tiktok real quick i posted to see if anybody had any questions and i think we got two if i'm not mistaken i know we got one regarding mr belichick for sure oh bill We'll see what he yeah. had to ask. No, not not from Bill, regarding <laughs> Bill. I wish we got a question from Bill. That would be awesome. Are you kidding me? Dude, I'd probably crap myself. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we got two about Bill, actually. So first of okay. all, we've got my guy Hammy Takes on TikTok asking, when will Bill Belichick retire? And I think we kind of addressed that. I don't remember if we were on camera or not, talking about him being pretty close to Shula's all-time win record. I mean, he's not going to do it until he breaks that. Yeah, no. Him and Shula have way too much. If he's not letting, he's not giving up anything either until he dies as a head coach. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He he's got to break that record, or like you said, he's got to die at the position. Yeah. There's there's no chance he's going to let it go before that. Um, I'm going to be like Nick Saban. He's probably going to coach until he dies too. Yeah. All right, and then we've got another Belichick-related question. How many rings do we think Bill Belichick would have won with Drew Bledsoe instead of Tom Brady? Absolutely zero. One. One? One. Because Bledsoe, I mean, before the injury, Bledsoe was solid. He was, And then he was just kind of like, he was good. He was serviceable, and then he just went to mid. Yeah. I think he, I think Belichick would have found a way to win one with Bledsoe, but I don't think Belichick would be coaching in the seventies if Brady never got the reins. Yeah, I can agree with that. That's that's valid. All right. Well, un- unless you guys have anything you want to bring up, any players we didn't touch on, any moves, any staff, anything that we didn't touch on, if you want to bring that up, you can now. Go Pats. Us against the world. <laughs> yeah, I agree with them. All right. Well, 
thank you. First of all, thank you guys so much for coming on. I really do appreciate it. Uh, this episode behind the scenes had a, had a little bit of goofiness to it. We had guys dro- jumping in and dropping out all over the place, and we had to push it back. What like two hours from when we were supposed to record it, basically. <laughs> so I appreciate. So we were supposed to do this at what, like seven? Yeah, and it's nearly ten o'clock right now. So. Hey, that that's what uh, quality content takes. I appreciate yeah. you having me on, man. Yeah, anytime. Uh, also, if you guys want to plug anything, you know, whether you want to plug your Twitter, you're doing something, whatever you want to do, go for it. I mean, you can follow me on Twitter at Porchy16. We're going to be uh, developing our own uh, sports podcast that covers basketball, baseball, and football. Um, yeah, go Sox, go Celtics, go Patriots. Uh, all right, Chris, do you want to plug anything? I mean, I'll plug my Twitter. Yeah, um, go for it. Joe underscore Chinexy on Twitter. All right, I'll make sure to have – Like three or four Ys. I don't know how many. I'm looking at it right now. It's three Ys. No. Yeah, okay, three yeah. Ys. Just three actually, Ys. Three yep. And I'll make sure to uh, to put those in the description down below because I know nobody wants to type anything out because everybody's lazy. But if you put the link in the <laughs> description, they'll go check it out. So – that's going to do it for this episode of the ball knower podcast team preview series. Once again, thank you guys so much for coming on. Um, and if you're watching this, make sure to leave in the comments down below what you Oh, one more thing uh, that, that reminds me one more thing we got to go over. How do we think the team's going to do this year? Uh, well, I've caught around and they get bounced. Okay. I'm going to say they go 11 and six wild card round loss. Okay, I have way lower expectations for the Patriots than you guys. What are your expectations? Sir? I mean, I think like sub at five hundred. It's oh, no. I don't, I don't. You really can't go five hundred, can you? you? Either go well, below or above. Yeah, yeah, but like, I, I'm thinking like seven wins. Well, that, that, that's a little mean. That's a little too mean. I don't. I know. Listen, I it's mean, that, like they said last year, and look, we showed out. I kinda. know, but like <laughs> looking at it ahead of time, even though you guys have Belichick, so literally anything's possible. It's just looking at your schedule now and what you're working with, and you know the fact that literally every other team in the AFC got marginally better, and you guys just kind of stayed the same. It's 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 hard, you know, like. It, I, I get it. I completely understand. Yeah, and but. your division got a lot better. It's going to be a lot more competitive. Like, believe it or not, the New York Jets are a viable football team now. Like, oh, yeah, they'll still find a way to mess it up. It's the Jets. Maybe. I don't know. I, I still have no confidence in Tua as a quarterback. I don't yeah. care if you put Tyreek Hill, Rainey Moss, Devontae <laughs> Adams, and the ghost of uh, Herschel Walker there. It, it, it doesn't get a mad or anything. Okay. I, 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 still think, I still think it's the Bills' division to lose and the Pats are the second team in the podium. Well, you're forgetting one very important thing with the Dolphins, and that's the fact that they signed one of the best uh, fullbacks in football, Alec Ingold. So they have Ingold, and Alec Ingold is the destroyer of worlds. So they're guaranteed to True. at least win eight games. But they also fired a really good head coach that yeah. built their defense. Yeah, that that's a whole other thing. But they they replaced him with somebody I have a lot of confidence in. I like McDaniel's a right. lot. So right, I just I just don't have confidence in their quarterback. I don't think yeah. Tua will. I don't. Know. Yeah, the AFC East is a weird division because it's either going to be super competitive or the Bills are just going to or- completely steamroll it. <laughs> like yeah. there, there's no in between. I don't think. Uh, so the Patriots. Yeah, Patriots in the two thousand. Yeah. Like the Patriots right now can finish either second in the division or I personally have them finishing last in the division. And I know you guys are going to hate me for that, but I got to be honest with you. It's just, it's, it's tough. It's tough. Like I look at this team, I think their ceilings high. I think their ceilings like 12, 13 wins, but the, the more like realistic expectation for me is like seven or eight. And that's, that's just not going to do it for me in that division. Cause I'm super high on the jets. I know you said the jets are the jets, but like they've got too much talent to fuck it up right now. There's no way. What talent do they have other than like, well, I like Zach Wilson cause he's they a drafted player. the best receiver. <laughs> okay. They drafted the best receiver in this past draft. They drafted the best running back in this past draft. They have a guy who's potentially the best slot or going to be the best slot receiver in football. Their defense has a bunch of pieces that are really nice. Their offensive line is solid. And I'm a big Zach Wilson fan. I, I'm a big believer in Zach Wilson. Top to bottom, that roster. Okay. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll believe like they have a really good roster on paper. Yeah. 
And I'm buying into it. I I think this stigma that the Jets are the Jets is is done. I think it's over with. I think Zach Wilson's going to break it, and I think the Jets are going to be a viable football I mean, team once again. Didn't they say that about the Giants when they drafted Daniel Jones? Too? Okay, well, I think Zach Wilson is a marginally better football player than Daniel <laughs> Jones. I mean, if that's the comparison we're giving them, Jesus Christ, give the no, kids no, some no, respect. No, 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 I'm just saying. I, I thought that's what they were saying when. Okay, uh, well, the give Giants Zach Wilson Daniel his Jones. respect. He's better than Daniel Jones by a lot. Yeah. Very much. Daniel Jones is ass. Daniel <laughs> Jones is probably the second worst start. Well, worse now that Baker's going to be a starter. He's the worst starting quarterback in football. Oh, well, I mean, we still consider Sam the starter for it now until Baker. I, I don't it's, know. I wouldn't sleep on Baker. I, I think I, no, Baker, I, 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 Baker is a better football player than Sam Darnold. He's going to start for the Panthers, and he's absolutely he's going to kill it. Yeah, but anyways, uh, like oh, sorry, go ahead. Like his first year in Carolina, I thought Sam was going to have a pretty decent year because he got rid of a shitty coach. I thought he and just to go to another he shitty coach. Him. <laughs> yeah, he went from one but shitty coach to another one. He's a fuck it up. Well, yeah. Anyways, that's going to do it for this episode. Like I was going to say before I, I caught myself and almost stopped our predictions, let us know in the comments down below how you think this team's going to do. Maybe you side with the Patriots fans here and think they're a playoff team. Maybe you side with me and think they're going to finish last in their division. This team is going to be very polarizing to say the least. Um, and if we missed anybody in the comments, let us know that we're stupid and we didn't give some guys credit. That's like the third string long snapper that was undrafted. That's secretly the next hall of famer or whatever. Uh, but anyways, that's going to do it for this one. Make sure to like and comment and subscribe. We're getting real close to 250 subscribers. That's our goal for the start of the NFL season. And make sure to all the people watching this and, of course, the two guys on the podcast with me to have a great day, night, evening, whatever time of day it is for you. I hope you enjoy it.